move on to our next speaker, which is um, A.D. Stefan. Uh, he will come and wrap up uh, today's findings and also make a on research into the requirements of millennials. Um, so, A.D. Stefan, Associate Director of PWC. Um, what I want to do, and there are millennials in the group here, and we've also got non-millennials. So what I would like to do is just take us through a little bit of the thinking and PwC's view on millennials and actually talk to you and hope to try and get you to understand what actually drives millennials and what makes up this millennial. So PwC has done a study. Um, we've consulted fairly wide globally. Um, you can see around 44,000 participants. And just to see what are millennials actually made up, up of. And one of the things you will see, um, very interesting, um, millennials, and now I'm struggling, because I didn't know that the monitor was that far away, so I have to apologize, I do have to put my glasses on. Um, who do we qualify as millennials? Young adults between 18 and 34, um, those of you born between 1980 and 96, Currently, you're looking at around about 80 million of them globally. So, I think in the room here, how many millennials have we got? Can you have a show of hands? Okay, that's a little bit disappointing, but I can see, I think, yes, there's quite a few. Um, by 2025, millennials will make up 75% of the global workforce. For us within PwC, by 2016, 80% of the entire workforce will be millennials. And millennials, as we're progressing now, they're forcing us to change the way we actually work, the way we think, the way we actually execute. And I want you to, I want to take you into that thinking for you to start experiencing what a millennial will actually experience. So millennials, they're diverse, they've got very different working styles, and they've got changing expectations. So millennials, and, and this is some of the feedback from the studies, um, have cited that training and development for them is one key differentiator. A okay, millennial will stay with an organization purely based on the training and development offered and not necessarily because of remuneration and other benefits. Also, one of the key differentiators going forward is millennials flocking to organizations that actually offer that opportunity and those possibilities. And I think throughout the day, We've heard quite a bit around the opportunities and the um, efforts that organizations will need to make to actually attract that talent and keep the talent. We've heard from several of the CEOs, finding talent is what keeps them awake at night. So, looking at all of this, there's some other changes that is currently globally happening. And we've very recently surpassed the 50 billion connected devices globally mark. Now, where does that leave the individual? And this is always a very challenging question that I pose. Have a guess how many connected devices you've got in your possession or on average does a person have in their possession? Any guesses? Three. Three. Okay, good guess. Any other guesses? Five. Okay, I think closer. So let's quickly have a count. I think everybody's got a laptop or a computer at work supported by an iPad, supported by a cell phone. Walking from work into your car, you get into your car, your car's got a tracker. You now need to get to a destination, you've got a TomTom -tom device in your car, we have five devices. Okay, you're driving home, you're walking at home, you connect to your Wi-Fi, six. You're sitting down, switching on TV, DSTV, seven. Okay, so on average, the normal person's got seven connected devices. So the world as we know is constantly changing and evolving and we are connected wherever you go. Looking at the changes that is currently facing us, technology, technology becoming more collaboration focused, demand, mobile, open source, rapid and interactive changes. Looking at the workforce, and I think we've seen that, baby boomers, um, retiring millennials becoming more and entering that talent war. And we know now that millennials are different to your other employees. In the workplace, we're becoming more mobile, working from home now, working from a different location. Um, we're more global, interacting, exchanging ideas. We're becoming a lot more virtual. 
shrinking lifespan of knowledge. If you get a document now, how long is that information valid? Two months, three months, if you create a manual, if you create some training material. Very, very short lifespan. Then innovation. Constantly innovating, changing, open sources and rapid changes happening in the world. What you can do as you walk out, um, you will see there's a very interesting website that I actually encourage you to have a look at. Um, it's the world in beta. It's up at the back there. Um, one of the interesting statistics is the website actually tracks as you open it how many emails are sent, how many patents are filed, how much money is spent at, since you opened the website in the UK online. Astronomical amounts. Okay, we had it open earlier on, we have to restart it now. But um, you're talking billions of emails that are currently being sent. Okay? Interesting because that's the changes that we're currently experiencing. So where does it leave the organization? Where does it leave specifically um, learning and where do the millennials that we've got fit in? Okay? Currently organizations are struggling um, specifically with the informal learning within the organization. Now informal learning is the learning that takes place outside the classroom. Now, for organizations to start understanding and managing this, we've developed a framework and what I want to show you now is to see how you can understand that learning that's taking place and by understanding then managing the learning and managing yourself better. So if you're a millennial and you get frustrated about certain things, I think I can help you understand why you're feeling that frustration. And if you're non-millennial and you're frustrated by millennials, I think I can also help you understand why the millennial is actually getting frustrated. So, at the moment, um, we need to look at a new model, how organizations are managing um, the interaction and engagement of employees. So, getting that unstructured and collaborative layer to learning included and actively starting to manage this landscape. Okay, that informal learning that's taking place is important and I'll show you now why it's so important and how do we start embracing that and how do we start including it. So, currently, and looking at the 702010 principle, these activities are not managed. Okay, very few organizations can claim that they've got a handle on this informal learning. Also, one of the other things, there's great interest. Social media, e-learning, all those buzzwords are out there. Now, how many organizations do you know where Facebook and any of the other social media are actually banned? Okay, Facebook, you try and open it, it says access denied. Then, if you look at millennials, and the research is there, the millennial, up to 15 times a day, opening and updating status on one of the um, social media portals, 15 times, okay? So if the millennial is not allowed to do that as part of their daily work, and in their work environment, they will do it in any case, okay? Try and challenge a millennial to say you're not allowed to do this at work, they will probably not be interested working for you. So what we're trying to do is by understanding these activities, trying to include them, and by including them, starting to manage them. So we've created a framework and this is very interesting because you can now start mapping different activities and you know start understanding different activities. So from a learning perspective, the outcomes are either defined or undefined. Okay, the organization is either structured or structured, unstructured. So outcomes, let me give you some examples quickly. Define, if we sit together and we run an Excel course, the outcomes are defined. I will show you how to save the document. We've got a mentoring and coaching relationship and we sit together. The outcome is undefined because I might want to talk about something and you might want to bring something else to the table. In terms of organization, structure, if we run the Excel course, we know exactly who's supposed to be there. We'll do a roll call at the beginning of the class and we know there's 10 people that are supposed to be attending. Unstructured. If I have an event where I invite people to participate, I don't know who necessarily will participate. So once we actually start and map this, you will see at the bottom, define and structure, 
instructor-led classroom courses, your e-learning computer-based training, any learning plans, anything that you do currently in the organization will reside there. On your right-hand side, the undefined structure, you've got your coaching programs, huddles, status meetings, where you know who's present, but you don't necessarily know where the outcome is. The top quadrant defined and unstructured crowdsourcing innovation contests. You actually know, you've set the parameters, you've defined um, what you would like to see, but from an unstructured, you don't know in terms of participation. Then the most interesting one, and I think of all the three that are there, the one that you need to focus on is the, is the one undefined and unstructured one. On the job learning, knowledge sharing, wikis, blogs, and things like that. Unstructured, undefined. You don't know where it goes. You don't know who's actually going to participate. At this point in time, organizations don't know how to manage this area. They've got no grip. They don't understand this. Now, from an interactivity point of view, if you look at your defined and structured quadrant at the bottom, there it's a one-to-many situation. So, in a classroom, the facilitator um, lectures to a class of 10. Your defined and unstructured is a many-to-one. Your undefined and structured one is a one-to-one -one type of relationship in a coaching um, environment. And then the undefined, unstructured one, and this is again the interesting one, you've got a many-to-many -many relationship. Now looking at collaboration, working together, where do you think the most learning will actually take place? Okay, this is what the studies have shown. Before we actually go to where the actual learning takes place, I want you to focus on where is the learning investment currently. And this is one of those challenging things where we go, okay, now in your defined and structured quadrant at the moment, organizations, and let's look at the learning budgets, let's look where we spend money, organizations spend 92% of their budget. That's your Excel course, that's any other type of learning that's taking place. Your undefined and structured, your mentoring and things like that, 4% of budget. Your defined and unstructured, 2%. Now, the interesting one, your undefined and unstructured, you've got 2% of budget is spent there by the organization. Now, remember I said to you, where does actual learning take place? Studies have shown, if you go into a classroom environment of an eight hour day, if you're talking pure classroom, so that taking the facilitator, lecturing to a group of people, you've got a retention rate of 10%. 10%, okay? 92% of your budget is spent on the 10% on the 10 of return. If you look at the top quadrant, your undefined and your unstructured, 65% of learning actually takes place there, okay? So your interaction, your social networking, your wikis, your blogs, knowledge sharing, me walking down to a colleague and saying, can you help me with this please? 65% of that are actually retained and I remember and I can use going forward. I think if you start looking at those numbers and you now take that, the way people like to learn and you look at how people like to learn and you map that, this is what actually comes out. And I think this is where you will now start understanding why when you take a group of millennials, you stick them in a classroom, and you make them sit for five days, after the first two days, you would have lost half the class already. Okay? So here we've got the learning styles that the different generations like to learn by mapped. And you can see Generation X and your baby boomers prefer the more structured and the defined way of learning, whereby your millennials sit very squarely in the unstructured and the undefined space right at the top there. Okay. Any questions? Happy to answer questions, happy to take questions. I know this was a bit rushed, but I think everybody has been a, quite a long day and I think everybody is also quite eager to, to take the journey home. Happy to field any questions if there are. Or did I stun everybody into silence? <laughs> Okay, let's go. 
Um, so maybe a comment to you just coming back. Uh, I, I love what you're saying. I think what's really interesting though is that most organizations don't recognize the informal living. So it's all very well to say maybe it's time to, to shift the way that we train people. But then the other side of it is that we've got to then recognize informal living. We've got to recognize what people are learning outside of formal training. So maybe come. I think you're 100% correct there. And this journey is not a journey that you can change overnight. So it's not a journey that today we are doing everything structured and defined and we're moving into an undefined and unstructured quadrant overnight. This is a journey that will take quite a bit of time. Um, it's not something that can, can be done overnight. So it's something that the organization needs to recognize and then the organization needs to go step by step trying to move into that top quadrant for learning to effectively take place then there as well. This is by no means, and I don't know there's some learning providers here, this is by no means um, stop classroom training. There is definitely, depending on the topic that you deliver, the, the audience that you're actually addressing, there is merit in delivering something by classroom. But I think it's key to understand how different generations learn and then applying that knowledge to the different generations working to their advantage. Any other questions? Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you everybody for coming through today. Um, I know it's been a long day. I did have a speech prepared. We're not going to do all that. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping I'd like to do. Uh, firstly, to our sponsors, we salute you for your contribution to uh, recognizing the talent diversity with the awards, seeing that we have sponsors across the products, but more than that, for reshaping the way we see the world of talent going forward. Um, I would also like to thank all our exhibitors here today. Um, we have Afrizan, HR Future, for the SABPP, for USB Executive Development, to the AEC, to the NYDA, to uh, South African Institute of Management, to Engagement Dynamics, Young and Able, Proudly South African, Dyna Training, and the University of Pretoria who helped us with the reception. We thank you very much for being here today for your support. Uh, your committed commitment to talent wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to do what we do without the support of our sponsors, so we really, really are thankful for that. Uh, one exhibit I didn't mention was Prize Voucher. Um, Justine has been collecting the information from everybody to do a prize hand for draw, which I'd like to quickly do and get out of the way. Um, do you want to come up, Justine? I'm mixing grab. <laughs> Smashing grab. Is Lebukhan Prussia from Armstrong here? Yeah. 